Joe in our prayers. We also want to keep our baptism families in our prayers. Bennett Cornish was baptized last night. Bennett is a tiny infant who has cystic fibrosis, so we keep him in our prayers as his journey of life is challenged. And then we also keep Odin Trader in our prayers. Odin will be baptized this morning, so we keep him in our prayers as well. And we also want to keep Tim Bowman. Tim was our interim director of Youth and Family um, a couple of years ago. Tim was ordained into the Word, Ministry of Word and Sacrament yesterday in Dodge Center, Minnesota. Pastor John was able to preach at that service. Um, he'll tell you more about that in his sermon, but that was very fun. And Tim has been called as the assistant pastor to Christ the King in Mankato, Minnesota. So we will keep Tim and that congregation in our prayers as we move on. Um, I think that's the instructions you need for now, so we will begin worship. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts, and we will begin worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <coughs> Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The opening hymn is, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, 
so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So it's time for the children's message, um, and I've been kind of wrestling with what to do here because I am not interested in sitting on concrete. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest, kids, we're going to go to one of the tables back here, and hopefully the microphone will reach, okay? Let's go back here. Because I'm not sitting on the concrete, and I'm not making you sit on the concrete. Come on, man. Come on. 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 Come on.
The Gospel according to Luke. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which, to work, on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I am back, much to the delight, I think, of Pastor Gene. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, I was on sabbatical leave for the summer months. A sabbatical leave is an opportunity for a pastor to kind of get away and get refreshed and get renewed and then come back. Um, I'm not sure it worked. I preached last night. I told someone this morning I preached last night and I'm ready for a vacation. I'm pooped. But um, seriously, it was a good, good um, sabbatical. And, and I want to tell you a little bit about it because as I go through that, it, it will link then with the text, with the words of Jesus. Um, my sabbatical had a whole bunch of pieces to it. And one of the big pieces was that uh, my family and I traveled to Germany. Um, I'm of German descent. Pastor Jean is partially a part German descent. She's been to Germany before. I hadn't been there. So we got a chance to travel to Germany and do a 10-day tour of Germany. And, and a couple people have asked her, are we going to do like a trip show, trip thing, you know, show pictures from our trip and so on. And this will be in the newsletter. We're looking at the third Sunday of uh, September between services. And then we're also looking at the second Sunday of October to do something a more, more specialized on the churches that we visited because the tour included seven churches in both big cities and small towns. And, and we thought it might be interesting to do something that talks about those churches and, and, and church life and so on. So I'll watch your newsletter for that. So that was really fun. Um, we also traveled to New York for a week to visit some family, including uh, one aunt in Wausau on the way and another aunt in New York to get some family stories and family history. And so I want to do some more work. It's kind of a work in progress, but some more work of writing down some family history um, that, that I can share then with, with my siblings and so on. Um, I'm also working on pictures. That's probably taken the biggest bulk of time. You know, I took a million pictures in Germany, and I wanted to work on, on learning to develop what are called raw format photos, if you care, um, with some new software that I purchased. The problem is I also discovered that my five-year-old computer was severely taxed. So I, so I ordered a new computer, but then the new computer needs a new monitor, and you can see where that's going. So I, that, too, is a work in progress. Um, did some reading, read some really interesting books. Uh, probably the best book that I read it was also one that Pastor Gene is just finishing up, and we both found it to be very gripping and intense, which is really kind of a statement because I don't think we've ever read the same book, uh, other than the Bible, of course. Um, and, and so, you know, this book, it, it, it's a book called German Boy, and it's written by a guy named Wolfgang, Wolfgang Samuel, who is a retired United States Air Force colonel. But he was born in Germany in 1935, and the, the sto it is his story from 1945 to 1950 of the collapse of society at the end of the war and how they survived when, when everything had collapsed around them. Just absolutely fascinating um, story to read. Um, so we're re we're, um, I read that along with some other books. I also worshipped in other churches. I worshipped at the Presbyterian Church here in West Salem. But I also worshipped at a number of, of ELCA churches in the area. And that, too, was really intriguing to me. Because I know the pastors in those congregations. They're friends of mine. And I know the liturgy. I know how to do this. 
And yet, even though I knew the person, the pastor, and I knew the liturgy, the congregation was a little different, I felt really weird and awkward and uncomfortable. So for those of you who are visiting with us today, if you are at all feeling anxious about being here, I feel your pain. Okay, I get it. I get it. I mean, I always sort of knew it, but now I get it. Um, just that idea of walking into a strange place and am I sitting in someone's pew? You know, that kind of thing. So I, I, I feel your pain and, and I appreciate your presence very much. Um, a couple of things that didn't happen. I was going to go fishing with my daughter a lot. You know, we go fishing a lot. Well, you know, we went to Veterans Park around the bridge over the, the water and we put the stuff in and you could see the fish nibbling at the hook. None of them really took enough solid enough bite. And I thought, we're getting a lot of action here. After five minutes, she said, no bites, I'm going home. Um, and we're not coming back, is basically what happened. And then, I, but I kind of knew that would happen. Her patience isn't that great. Um, we also were going to do a lot of bike riding, didn't get as much done as we wanted. But one thing really stands out. And it occurred, it first occurred, it occurred throughout the, the sabbatical, but it especially occurred on the second Monday of July. And here's what happened. On the second Monday of the month, we have our congregation council meetings. We didn't have one on the second Monday of June because we were in Germany, and we typically take one month off during the summer, so that was the month that the council didn't meet. On the first, or the second Monday of July, the council met. Now, you have to understand the dynamic of a sabbatical. In most sabbaticals, the pastor leaves the congregation for three months, maybe they even bring in an interim to, to kind of hold down the fort. And after three months, the pastor comes back and says, well, what happened while I was gone? That, didn't, that wasn't our dynamic because the other pastor was still hanging around, you know? And, and so she would come home and she was very good about not telling me what was happening. She, she really worked hard not to bring me into stuff. But there were occasions, she called me up one day, it was the middle of the afternoon, she called up, called, called the house, and she said, um, can you come off of sabbatical for five minutes? I have a question for you. But other than that, she was really careful not to do that. What happened, though, what we discovered, was that for me, I was gone for three months, but because the other pastor was, you know, in the same house, I couldn't be totally separated. And so I was in a situation where I could, I could see what was happening, but I couldn't touch it. It was out of reach, but not out of sight. And so the second Monday in July, the Congregation Council was meeting and several things were coming together that had potential to be really significant and go in some directions that, that you know, were, 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 could be challenging, but also had an element of timeliness, like we can't just, you know, table this till November. And so I told Pastor Jean, I said, you know, if, if this thing comes up and goes in a particular direction and I need to come off sabbatical so we can deal with this, fine. <clears throat> I'll do that. So it didn't go in that direction, so that didn't happen. But what it made me realize was what I just said, that I could see what was happening even though it was out of touch, out of reach. But I also saw something else happen. She came home that night, and she sort of debriefed what happened at the council meeting, and I realized that what I was seeing happen was God at work. That in the people of the council who, who had some very thoughtful and deep conversation, who wrestled with some possibilities, some challenges, some opportunities, that God was at work in them. And I could see it happening even though I couldn't touch it. That also happened with a group we call Forward, Fearless, and Faithful. We have a Forward, Fearless, and Faithful team. And I recruited them at the, you know, during the, mid, the spring, late winter, early spring months, I recruited them to do some thoughtful con consideration of what our mission and ministry is, and then I abandoned them. But they continued to move ahead, forward, fearless, and faithful. And then we have another group that I recruited, you see a pattern here, I recruited another group in the you know, late spring months called Stewardship for All Seasons, and then I abandoned them too. But they continued to work, and I could see God at work in them. 
Or how about the summer lunch program? You know, I don't, I normally, I have very little to do with the summer lunch program. They fed 3,000 kids, 3,000 meals, not 3,000 kids, 3,000 meals this year. I typically don't have a lot to do with the summer lunch program. This year I had nothing to do with the summer lunch program because I wasn't even around. Or the corn roast. If people here who put in a lot of time, that's another thing that I don't usually do a whole lot with. But this year I did nothing with the corn roast. But people were at work. God was at work in the people who made the corn roast happen. Vacation Bible School. Pastor Jean had a lot of extra work this summer. So she said, I cannot do Vacation Bible School. If we want to have it, others have to step forward. And so people like Wendy Kane and Eric Iliff and Jake Iliff and Carolyn Carl and Stephanie Subject stepped forward and made Vacation Bible School happen. God was at work through them. And again, I could see it happening even if I couldn't touch it. Now that's all stuff I sort of know and knew. I mean, I've done this for 30 some years. I know God's at work in our midst, but it was fascinating to see it happen like that. To be able to look and see God at work in the lives of others, in the community of faith, and through others in the world around us. To see that happen. So Jesus comes into town one day, he goes into the synagogue, okay? And there's this woman who is, you know, all crippled over. She's been that way for 18 years. And it's an interesting thing in the, in the story that, that was pointed out to me in Bible study this last week. Someone in Bible study caught this. That in a lot of the healing stories in the Bible, somebody comes up to Jesus and says, Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Have mercy. That didn't happen. Jesus went to her. Jesus went up to her, called her forth, and healed her. And got into trouble for it. Because it was the Sabbath. Now, spoiler alert here. Sabbath, sabbatical, same thing. I mean, same concept. They, they come out of the same Hebrew word uh, of, of rest. A Sabbath day or a sabbatical are related. Okay, so that's your spoiler alert here. So, um, so Jesus does this miracle on the Sabbath and gets in trouble. So what, what's a Sabbath? What's the Sabbath day? Um, I, it's, it come, you know, comes out of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, you're all doing that great. Love it. Um, that's not really what it's about. And so when I teach confirmation, when I teach my 7th and 8th graders, here's what I teach them. That Sabbath is about rest at its, at its heart. You know, 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, oh, it was much more than 30, but back in the 70s, back way back in the 70s, um, I remember reading in Newsweek magazine, that social scientists were deeply concerned about what was going to happen to our society because computers were going to shorten the work week to 30 hours a week and we'd have gobs of free time and what would we do? How's that working for y'all? Lots of free time, lots of nothing, no, don't have anything to do? <clears throat> Especially those of you with kids, you have nothing to do all day, right? We live in a culture and a world that is incredibly stressed. We are pressured. We go in 17 directions all at once. And we try to figure out how we maintain our sanity in the midst of all that. Maybe Sabbath is not a bad idea. Remember a time of rest. To find a time of rest, of real rest, instead of constantly going in so many different directions might be a really good thing for our mental and emotional well-being. But Sabbath... Sabbath day is deeper than that. I mean, it, 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 I would encourage you all to make sure you get good rest, lighten up your lives, slow down a little bit. But a Sabbath day, I teach my 7th and 8th graders, is more than just getting a nap. Sabbath is about connecting with God's gifts of life in the person of Jesus. That's why we come here on a Sunday morning, or at least periodically, to be restored by the gift of word and sacrament. To be restored, rejuvenated, renewed in what we are about. But the, the words of Jesus today drive that even deeper. It's not simply about showing up in church. It's not about that. What it is about is looking around and realizing, noticing, discovering that God is at work in our lives. You ought to be able to see a lot of that. Right? Over at, at Lakeview, there's a lot of God at work in Lakeview, isn't there? You're part of it, aren't you? Right? Right? 
God's work, your hands. You see, to be able to look, and, and, and Diane, to be able to look around and say, I see God at work. Or for you guys to be able to say, I see God at work. See? You do say that, don't you? Once in a while, I see God at work. Right, right. Mom does a few things now and then, right? Yeah, good. Just making sure. To be able to see that God is at work in our lives, whether it's in, 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 in terms of, of professional work or in terms of what's happening in the community of faith or even what is happening to you. Think about God at work. Okay, so we have this, this wonderful child. Um, and he is, he's starting to develop personality, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Um, so think about this. Think about how God is at work here. There is obviously, there is a... a um, a biological uh, uh, activity, action, I'm trying to be very coy here with my language because it is a sermon, that led to the creation of life. That two cells two came together and created life. Life that began to develop and now has been born and is beginning to develop a person. And it came in these two little teeny little, little cells that came together. I mean, is that not a miracle or what? Is that not God at work? God is at work in the birth of a child. God is at work as that child begins to develop and to grow and to nurture and, and, and to mature, begin to develop personality, sometimes good, sometimes maybe not so good, but develop that, that sense of uniqueness. Really? Yes, I'm talking about you. Okay. But God is also at work. God is also at work in these two persons who raised this child. God is at work in Odin's life with a mother and a father, with with family, friends, and relatives who are about who are about raising him and nurturing him. So my thought to you is, is this a moment of Sabbath? To look at Odin and say, God is at work. And you really need to do that, especially at 2 in the morning when he's not wanting to sleep. That, that's when you really need to do that. But to understand that there, as we see God at work in our life, maybe there we begin to feel a sense of renewal and re re restoration as you go to work and you see other people or maybe it's the maybe it's the resident who you look at and say wow you are such a gift of god to me you know to be able to see in those places god at work to be restored and renewed in who and what we are that maybe that's what sabbath is about and for me, maybe that is what my sabbatical was really about. To be able to come back with a renewed appreciation, to be able to see how God is at work in the life of this community and in the people who are a part of this community in many and various ways. Which leads me to my last one. Um, Pastor Gene noted that yesterday we were out in Dodge Center, Minnesota for Tim Bowman's ordination. I need to say a word about that. Uh, Tim was our interim youth director for about, I don't know, eight or nine months, seven, eight, nine months, kind of in an interim period. And um, he came here right after he had, he came here with a two-year degree from Luther Seminary. He was not going to be a pastor. He had a two-year Master of Arts degree. Um, his wife, um, Allison, uh, they were married right before he started here. She was the intern at English Lutheran Church in La Crosse. She had two years in <clears throat> in her Master of Divinity degree. She had to do her internship, and then her, her final year would be um, ordained as a pastor, which has happened. Um, but one of the things that happened, as, as Tim did his work here, and he's told me this, <clears throat> is that his work in this congregation and our presence, our journey with him, was where he heard the call to become a pastor. It's on us, folks. It's on us, in a good way. What that means is, picture 20 years from now. Picture 20 years from now, someone going through an incredible crisis in life, and they come to Pastor Tim, and Pastor Tim is there for them, and helps them, and nurtures them, and works them through this incredibly difficult point in their life, and that person will say, thank God for Pastor Tim. They won't know, but we can say, it started here. So when that person looks and says that God is at work in their life through Pastor Tim, we can say, but we were at work in Tim's life. And so by extension, we are making a difference in lives way down the road. That's God at work. 
I don't know what this kid's going to do. Maybe he's going he's to be some kind of a, you know, a, a really fabulous doctor who discovers some cure to some hideous disease. And, you know, people will say, what a hero he is. But it doesn't happen if God is not at work in his life. Right? If God is not at work in his life. If God is not at work in his life. Through you, through everyone else. Really. I'm, I get confidence in you. I do. All right? That's good. My invitation to you this week is to look around, and, look around and see where God is at work in your life. Not only you personally, but in the world around you. Where is God at work in you, in your life, in the world around you? And where is God at work through the community of the faithful? Where is God at work? And then kind of take a deep breath and say, ah, isn't that great? Makes me feel better. Restores me and renews me because God is at work. Amen. We continue with the singing of the hymn, um, Amazing Grace. And you're not, you don't need to stand.
and join in God's mission for the life of the world. We present Odin Joseph Trainer for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? We do. As you bring Odin to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Odin may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Odin grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Odin in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? I do. People of God, do you promise to support Odin and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. Parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and profess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. People of God, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people of Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Large candle which is hiding behind you here, and which we don't want to set anybody 
flame. <laughs> so please be careful. This large candle is lit on three occasions. We light it during the season of Easter. We light it um, at baptisms and funerals. We light it on those occasions to remind us that in the resurrection and the power of the resurrection, the promise, the gift of new life has been won by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That promise is made to us in the waters of baptism. And when we die, God does not forget the promise that God made. God redeems and fulfills that promise. We take a smaller candle, a baptism candle, and we light it from this little large candle as a reminder of the new baptism that promise this day has been made to open. That the darkness of life is set aside by the gift of Jesus, by his promises, and by his presence. And we're going to give this to somebody who is safe with fire. Are you safe with fire? You can have the candle. With the invitation that each year you light this candle for a few minutes to remind only that in the midst of what is sometimes a dark journey of life, that the light of Christ continues to burn brightly in him, in him and in his journey. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God, the Mary of God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And we have a couple of gifts for you. One, this is your Bible. This is a gift from the congregation that a family can talk when, when the dad really believed their children and he wanted their memorial to share with, with little ones. Your first Bible is to turn them into the Jesus' Bible. So while you're doing much, your Bible, okay? Your first Bible. And then one of our ladies makes a quilt. And you're going to come with me. Which is going to be okay. I'm going to wrap you in God's love in this book. We will continue with the prayers, and because of our acoustics, I will read the prayers and you can do the response. Treasuring your promise to hear us when we call, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of your creation. Lord of mercy, we cry to you for help, trusting in your compassion for your whole creation. 
Raise up the baptized to offer Christ healing and forgiveness to all in distress. Hear us, O oh God. We rejoice in your creation, water that nourishes lands and creatures, gardens and fields with the diversity of plants. Bless scientists and artists who show us new ways of understanding the complex beauty around us. Hear us, O oh God. We seek the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Come to the rescue of those who are displaced by war, famine, or other disasters. Bless diplomats, peacekeepers, rescue workers, and all who are given aid through their efforts, so that peace and plenty prevail. Hear us, O oh God. You provide deliverance and justice for all who are oppressed. Free those in bondage to substances, gambling, or other forms of addiction. Release victims of human trafficking and bring them to safety. Hear us, O oh God. You know our needs in this community. Heal the hurts of all bent over with sickness, aging, or suffering. Accompany those who visit homebound members, the hospitalized, and those who are in prison. Hear us, O God. You comfort those who are isolated, alone, and homebound. Especially this week, we pray for Arlen and Janet. Surround them with your loving embrace and fill them with your gifts of life and hope. Hear us, O oh God. You raise up witnesses in every generation. As we remember those who have passed into your peace before us, comfort us in the sure hope of your Son's resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. You walk with us on our journey. Grant healing and wholeness to those who have been hospitalized, especially Joel. Grant him strength and patience in his recovery. Be with Bennett, washed in the waters of baptism. Be with him in the challenges of life as he learns to live with cystic fibrosis. Be with Odin as he is washed in the waters of baptism. Hold them both in your loving embrace as they grow in life and faith. We give you thanks for those who answer your call to ministry. Be with Tim and the members of Christ the King as they begin their ministry together. May they hear your word and be fed by the sacraments always centered and grounded in you. Hear us, O oh God. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
pray with me. Blessed are you, O God, for the greening earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
O God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord.
before we dismiss, please we know that you are invited to the, the meal following worship. Um, Wendy's got everything all put out there. Thank you so much, and thank you for those who brought things. Even if you didn't bring anything, please come and join us for the meal. Um, we will sing. Um, be present at our table, Lord, and then we will do the dismissal. Be present at our table, Lord. Be